Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about attention span and children and how to increase your child's attention span. So this is an email that I get from a lot of you guys. Um, how is it that I can increase my child's attention span? I try the activities on your channel, but my child will not sit still, not even one minute. What can I do? I want my child to sit down and do their work. I want them to do their homework for those that send their kids to school. And the child will not sit down, will not sit still. So this is a concern that a lot of you share. I want you to know that a lot of you share this concern. And so today, I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks that I've tried with my children to be able to um, increase their attention span. So first off, you should know that depending on the age, you should have different expectations. You can't expect a two-year-old to sit down for 30 minutes to do something with you because it's very unlikely that they will. But you can expect them to sit down maybe for five minutes with you at a time. And then when they get to three years old, maybe 10 minutes and so on. And when they get to four years old, it could be 15 to 20 minutes. And that's how it goes. So you have to understand that depending on their age, they're going to be able to have different attention spans. So I'm going to give you a lot of tips on attention spans, activities that you can do to, to extend your child's attention span. But if you don't do the two things that I'm going to tell you, the first two things, all, everything else is not going to matter because these two things are very important. So the first thing is having a healthy diet for your children. Healthy diet is, is, is prime because if you are not feeding your child wholesome food, their brain is not going to be uh, functioning properly. So you want to remove things that have artificial colors, dyes, flavors, preservatives from your child's diet. Um, stay away from processed foods if you can. Um, for example, in my, in my home, we don't buy juice. We don't buy, a lot of people give their kids juice all the time. In my home, you only find water and milk and I make smoothies for them with natural fruit here at home. Um, but you will only find juice in my house if I have guests over, if, it's a, if there's a particular event that we are having at our home or we're going to someone else's home. But you will not find juice, box juices, you won't find ice cream, you won't find cookies, you won't find junk food. Because all of those things, if you have them in your home, your children are going to be snacking on all the time and that's not a good thing. Um, so I try to make things from scratch. If I'm going to make cookies for a special you know, weekend, I'll make the cookies from scratch with just a few ingredients. Um, I'll make the ice cream. I'll make ice pops, for example. Um, so try to make things from scratch so that you don't find all these uh, additives in their, in their food. Um, because when you go and you buy something that's in a package, you're going to see a paragraph of ingredients in those things. And, and a lot of those additives are very harmful for children and they're linked to hyperactivity. Um, so for, try to stay away from processed foods and instead of eating processed foods, try things that grow on the ground, grow on trees. That, that should be your thumb rule. If it doesn't grow on the ground, if it doesn't grow on the trees, don't use it as a side. So, get, so eat things like rice, yams, potatoes, other veggies as sides. To get away from all the frozen foods, um, from foods that come in packages. Um, and again, tone it down with the sugar because sugar is linked to hyperactivity. Um, don't have candy, don't have ice cream in your home, don't have cookies on a weekly basis. Use those for special events as a treat. So that's the first thing. Have a wholesome diet for your children. The next thing is we all know that our children are overloaded these days with technology. You have to regulate your child's technology use because overuse of screens is linked to hyperactivity and to shorten attention spans. So I would recommend children under two, two and under to not watch any type of TV or screens. Um, I am so like surprised when I see little ones, one, two years old, using tablets, using phones, it causes a lot of damage um, and you have to remove it if you want to see uh, an increased attention span in your children. So, for example, in my home, we, my children don't have individual, individual tablets. And, and just for you, for you guys that don't know uh, my children's ages, I have a seven-year-old, three-year-old, five-year-old, and eight-month-old. So we don't have individual tablets for the kids. We have one tablet that they can all share. One family tablet, one family laptop, 
We have a projector where the kids can watch movies and documentaries, educational shows. We also have a DVD player. And so we don't have a TV. We don't have a TV that's constantly in the center of our home and the kids are constantly watching. And so that's, that's a big one here. Also, in my home we have this screen time rule that they are not allowed to watch screens during the week. Um, they can watch it in the weekends all they want. Why do I have that rule? Because in the weekend we're usually out in nature, we're all visiting family, we are not home very much, so that helps us regulate it. Now they are allowed to watch certain things that are related to, their, to the schoolwork or are related to an interest that they have. Like, for example, if I, if I know that we're studying ants, I may allow them during the week to watch an ant documentary and stuff like that. Um, but it's not on constantly. And if you do have your children who have tablets, I recommend that you have a particular time period that you set, set up for the, for the tablets. Um, and then after that, the tablets are off. Um, there are apps that you can download and that the tablets will automatically turn off once the time period has ended. So there's ways to regulate your children's tablets if you choose to give your children's individual tablets, which I recommend you don't. But if you do, there's ways of regulating it. Um, so that's, that's, that's one big thing. I, when I go to restaurants and I see kids on these tablets, um, I, I see that, that is parents, they, they are, they don't know any other way on how to manage their children. When they take these tablets away, their children are out of control. Their children are, they can't sit still. But this is the reason, this is one of the reasons why. When you always have a screen in front of a child and you take that screen away, everything else is not as interesting anymore. Everything else is, is dull. Everything, they, they get, um, they, they are overstimulated with these devices. So this is why you shouldn't have them constantly on these devices. And I wouldn't recommend for them to watch it uh, for more than an hour a day. Okay, so moving on from that. Let's move on to what you can do, what, what type of things you can do to increase your child's attention span. So one of the things that I have here is enroll your children in some type of sport or class. Um, so for starters, gymnastics, soccer, and swim are very popular ones to start off with. Um, and exercise makes your brain work better. Um, studies have, have shown that children who, who exercise on a weekly basis have increased attention, have increased memory. They do better in school. They have better grades. So having your child in some type of sport once a week is very good. If you cannot do that for whatever reason, just make sure that your child is playing outdoors, playing with ball, playing soccer, climbing trees, running around. Very important to have your child exercise. All right, let's move on to the next one, puzzles. So puzzles are big in my home. I start off when they're two years old, one and a half, two, with those knob puzzles. Um, and then I move on to nine piece puzzles, then to 12 piece. Then I move on to 15, 20, 30. Now they're up to 100. And so it just, they're great because they, the child has to sit down and they have to put these puzzles together. And any time that you're sitting down for a long time, you're working that skill of concentration. Um, so that's very important. Also, puzzles help boost logical reasoning and problem solving. So it's, it's really good to have kids do puzzles. And I sit down and I do it with them, so it's like a family thing. And we all love doing puzzles together. Another one is word searches. They're great because it helps children uh, focus on looking for these words that are scrambled. And so it helps with vocabulary as they're finding these words and they're learning how to spell these words and it helps with focus as they have to go row by row looking for these words. These are just little things that you can do to increase attention span. Another one that we love doing around here is coloring and drawing. I made a video on coloring because we have made this like a family thing. We first started, you, you could first start off like we did. I would sit down with the kids and I would take out a coloring book and I would say, we're going to color for 10 minutes. Let's see, which one do you want to color from here? And I'll tear up a page for each of my children and we would sit there and we would color for 10 minutes. And you know, you can go prolonging that and go to 15 minutes. We would be, we could stay there for an hour now, coloring and drawing because we love that as a family. And so that's uh, something that you could do. Two activities that my children love 
that they will sit there for hours doing is Legos and sensory bins. So if if you if you know if you if your child is into Legos, you know that they can do that for hours. They absolutely love that. Legos, their classic toy. Kids will play with them for hours. Um, sensory bins. My kids love playing with water sensory bins and sand sensory bins. So I'll just throw a couple toys in there and they will be there for a long, long time. I have made a video on all, I have, I have a whole playlist on all of our sensory bins that I have created for my children over the years here on my channel and I'll link it below. But we've also loved water beads. There's so many other sensory bins that I have created for my children that I want you guys to check out. I'll link it below. So those are two that my kids will do for a very long time. So when I'm going to go take a shower or I'm going to go clean the home, instead of turning on the TV, I'll take out a sensory bin, I'll take out the sand, I'll take out the, a water bin, or I'll take out the Legos. And I know that they're going to be there for a long time. Also, nature, guys. Nature is huge. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys know that. If you look outside, kids are playing less and less. It's really sad that... Every time I go to the park, I see less and less kids. And the kids that are there, I see them on phones. I see them on devices. Um, take your kids out to play for at least 30 minutes a day. That's the minimum. Even prisoners in jails get more outside time than kids these days. Um, they're outside for like two hours. And so I don't know what's going on with our society. It's a shame that our society... Um, is not taking kids out and that kids are more on electronics and on screens than they are playing outside. Um, I recommend a book called The Last Child in the Woods by Richard Louvre. And he talks about how not taking kids out into nature is what's causing ADHD, hyperactivity, and a lot of, uh, of the childhood diseases like childhood obesity. And so I really recommend that book because I think he gives a, a different perspective. And so bring your kids outside. Bring them outside um, to the parks, to nature, to open fields, and let them play. Don't bring toys with you. Just let them play. Let them use their imagination. That's another thing. You don't always have to be entertaining your children. In fact, the less toys you have, the, the more their attention span will be. Don't have an overload of toys. Do toy rotation. Don't have a lot out. That shortens attention spans. Um, the less toys you have, the more they have to use their creativity, the more they have to think about things, their imagination. They build a hut under the table. The table becomes a ship. They go into the closet. They try mom's things out. They go to the mirror. They see how they look. There's so many things. Right now, they're building like a restaurant right now in, the, in, in their little play area that I've set up for them. And I have made a video on some of the toys that I have kept for the kids because I have really minimalized my kids' toys. And I'll link that video below for you guys. Um, another one is have a predictable routine for your children. When you have a predictable routine and you have discipline in your home, children um, are able to have longer attention because they have more discipline. Discipline is related, is correlated to um, attention span. It has, it has to do with discipline. And so you, if you have a routine and if you have a daily routine, you have a wake-up time, you have a lunch time, you have a nap time for your kids, you have a predictable routine that you do every single day and you're consistent, you're going to see that your child's attention span will increase. All right, so let's see what else I have here on my notes. This is, I read aloud to the kids for at least 30 minutes a day. And um, when I read to them, I have them sometimes play with Legos or maybe do a handicraft like sewing um, for my oldest or doing something that they're doing some type of handwork. Handwork also is great. I can do a video on hand handwork, what we do for, for handicrafts for the kids so they can work on um, sewing skills, beading, a lot of different handicraft activities. And, and so the longer you have them sit, the more their attention span will increase. And so um, when the child is eating at your table, have them practice not getting up while they're eating. Um, that's a big one because if your child is getting up every five seconds to go run around and then come back and eat, they're gonna do that in a restaurant. They're gonna do that in the doctor's office. They're gonna do that wherever you are. So discipline starts at home. You have rule. 
You stay in your seat until you're done with your meal. And um, you, you go practicing that, and, and it comes with time. I also would practice with children doing one thing at a time. And so, if you're gonna be eating, you're gonna be eating. You're not gonna be eating and watching cartoons. Um, if you're on a line, to, you're waiting on a line for something, you don't have to be on your phone or on a screen. You just wait there. And that's how you focus. That's how you focus on being in the present moment, focusing on what's in front of you, observing what's in front of you. Um, do one thing at a time. Focus on that. And um, as you help children do this, um, they will increase their attention spans. Because when you, I think society views multitasking as a positive thing. But multitasking is actually a way that you fragment your attention. And so even you as an adult focusing on, if you're washing the dishes, just wash the dishes. You don't have to be on the phone. You don't have to be doing anything else. Just wash the dishes. You as an adult are a great example for your children. So if your children constantly see you on your phones and, and um, you're constantly seeing you on the TV, on your devices, you can expect them to do the same. Because children don't do as you say, they do as you do. They do as you do. You are their biggest role model. Um, the last one that I have here is... Um, oh, I forgot to mention one thing, guys. When you're out to, to, the, to the doctor's office, to the restaurants, um, don't give kids iPads. Don't give them devices. Don't bring toys. Don't bring Cheerios. Don't bring snacks. You're sitting down on a table, you're sitting down on a table, you're talking, you're eating. Um, I feel like when people are in different places, they feel like they have to bring a bag of Cheerios and they have to be popping them in the mouth all the time. And that is just, you know, you, you're not helping the child work on that skill of sitting still. That is a skill that is, needs to be developed and if you don't give them the chance to develop it, they're never going to develop it. So when you go places, don't bring snacks, don't bring toys. Have the child just sit down and be there at that moment. Practice and you will get there. The last thing that I have here is board games. We love board games here. My family, we love playing board games. And we love the cooperative board games where there's no losers. And I'm going to be linking some of those below in the description box. Game, board games help increase attention span because the child has to wait their turn. They, they learn how to wait their turn, they learn patience, they learn um, uh, problem solving skills. We love preschool dominoes, we love companies that create co cooperation games and I'm going to link some of them below. We love them. Um, so I have a whole playlist on um, board games that we love. I have a whole video on, on the board games that we love for our kids and I'll also link that video below for you guys. But definitely sit down as a family and play board games. Whatever you guys like. It could be a card games. It could be dominoes. It could be uh, shoots and ladders. There's so many. Candy Lane. Candy Land. There's so many games. Um, there's so many classics that you can play with your children. Um, and I, this, is just, this was just a short list of some of the things that you can do to increase your child's attention. span. remember that you want to practice sitting still. You want to practice stillness. You want to practice doing one thing at a time. Um, you want to practice being present for your children so that they can be present with you. And as you do these things, as you improve your child's diet, as you remove electronics from your home, as you do these activities that I mentioned in this video, you're going to see your child's attention span increase. I hope this video has been helpful. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do and click on the notification bell so that you never miss a video. Also, if you want to, you can subscribe to my email list because I will email you the video as I put them out every week. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Please look below in the description box so you can see some of the things that I mentioned. Until the next time, bye-bye.